Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Exploration Place. My name is Denzel. We're gonna be discussing some anemometers and you know what, you can make one at home when I'm doing this. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to make an anemometer that you can build at home. You're gonna need a few supplies in order to make this happen. Uh, let's start off with the supplies, then we'll go over what an anemometer is, we'll build one, and then we'll test it out. So the first one is going to be this. This is kind of the easier version of it. We're gonna need a couple cups, two cups of just about any size. These are three ounce cups. We're gonna need a straw. I happen to have this paper straw. And we'll need something firm like this, uh, this tongue depressor or popsicle stick. Okay? That's for our easy build. Uh, with both of these, I might recommend having some tape sitting along the side and a marker. We need something to color one of our cups, which you'll see in a moment. Our more advanced one is going to use hot glue gun, scissors, different size straws. I'll show those to you. Oop, both of these. And of course, cups. Now, I chose a, uh, a different cup. This is like your water cooler cup. I want to do a comparison between those and this one, just for fun, because I like to experiment ever so often. So, what is an anemometer? Well, put simply, an anemometer is something that helps us measure wind speed. This is one that is a great example made of plastic, and it's really, really fun to work with. It's got these two parts. We have the center, uh, this kind of, uh, this center rod section. We place the spinning cups on top. As the cups spin, because of wind catching into the scoops, we can actually count how fast the wind is moving based upon how many times in a circle a given time that we are looking at this red cup. So we're going to count that. For example, here's one revolution, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. With some fun math, we can figure out wind speed. So let's go ahead back to the table and find out how to build one of these ourselves. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with our easy one. So earlier we mentioned we need the straw, we need the popsicle stick, we need cups, and you know what? I'm going to use both types of tape and of course, a marker. What types of tape? I'm using a double stick sided tape. You don't need it, you can use a single sided tape, stick tape, um, but I'm gonna use one, like I said, just for fun. I like to start off with the straw and the stick together. We are going to take a strip of tape, I don't know, somewhere around two inches, place it about, or right in the middle of our popsicle stick. Now we're going to, <laughs> Denzel, you did a great job, look at that middle. Right there, there's the middle. Now we're gonna place our straw on the popsicle stick, bend down our two pieces of tape. And let me get in front of that, behind that, so you can see that lovely contrast. We've made ourselves a T. This is going to represent the center uh, pillar, and this will be the arms where the scoops are going to be, so this will spin. Okay. You may wanna reinforce that. I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants and see if one piece of tape is good enough. The next thing we're going to use is, like I said, some double-sided tape. I'm going to get two pieces of double-sided tape. I'm just going to stick them on the bottom of our popsicle stick. Just like so. I'm going to go ahead and place our first cup here. And our second cup, we are going to point in the opposite direction. This is the bottom, this is the bottom. Let's flip it around and point in the opposite direction. Now, we happen to have ourselves a lovely looking anemometer just like so. Unfortunately, we can't really measure wind speed because it's hard to tell the cups apart from each other. So we need to decorate one of these cups. I'm gonna grab, I don't know, gray. No, you know what? I want to use orange. It'll be a little easier for me to see and hopefully for you to see later on. I'm gonna do a little doodle. Let's do some weird exclamation marks. And maybe you can see EP on the cup. Nice. You know what? If not, let's do this. Let's go a little crazy. Let's go a little wacky. Let's grab ourselves some green and go around the outside edges. Ah, that looks beautiful. All right, let's place that cup back in place. And now we can definitely see that cup compared to the other one. All right, so that's kind of a simple one. Let's do a slightly more advanced one put this over here for a little bit later when we go to test it. For this one, we use some hot glue. Now, hot glue guns are hot, especially from this end forward. So we like to keep our fingers away from that end, okay? We're going to bring back the same supplies, our cups, our center uh, wooden piece. I'm using a slightly larger tongue depressor, and two different size 
uh, straws. And this will allow us to actually use the anemometer without the apparatus that I have behind me in the model. Pull out some scissors and some tape. Uh, let's start by cutting the larger size, the larger diameter straw in half, like so. And we can see that our smaller size straw fits inside of our larger size straw. This will help us later on when we need to do kind of like a pinwheel. We're going to have that happening for us. Now, I like to, like I said, sorry, I like to use hot glue. Let's put a little bead of hot glue right here in the middle of our large tongue depressor. I'm really good at gauging the middle. We're going to place our straw right in here, kind of ooze it around, hold it. That looks great. As it falls down on the table, we're going to go ahead and move on to something else. <laughs> As predicted. All right, let's hold on to it for a little bit longer. Great. Our low temp uh, hot glue gun apparently is not very low temp. It's high temp. So use your low temps at home. It'll go a little bit faster. Below is a silicone mat if you're interested. And that helps us keep the hot glue off of our tables and surfaces. Silicone mats are great for keeping things off that are sticky, off of things that you don't want things to be stuck on. They do not make for good cutting mats, however. So keep that in mind when you're doing your project. That looks good. While that's doing uh, its final kind of freezing in process, uh, we are going to take one of our halves. We're going to uh, we're going to take one of our halves. We're going to push down, push down inside of here. We want to close up this bottom half, but leave this top half open. This will be great for us when we flip this over, place it inside, and now you have the ability to spin this wherever you go throughout your house, and you might be able to measure air movement through the house. Now, the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and just put some beads of glue on the outside of our anemometer here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Place our cups. Remember, we want them to face in opposite directions. And now we have a slightly more advanced looking anemometer device. I wonder if it'll work better than that other one. Now, if you want to add a bit of decoration, I love to put some decoration on things. Uh, you can use your markers. You can use some cool paper tape like this to go ahead and swing around the middle shaft. I like to have some artistics to all of my projects in some form or fashion. And that will look very beautiful as it spins in place. Oh, I can hear you at home. You're very, very right. We need some color on one of our cups. So glad you reminded me. I'm going to make cool, I don't know, flames or something on this one. Let's see here. That looks like a flame, right? Perfect. Let's go ahead and do some yellow and some orange for cool looking flames. Last one, orange. Looks like an explosion coming right at you. Great. Now, we've, go out, we've gone ahead and we've built our anemometers. We took our cups, we took our tongue depressors or popsicle sticks, and we've placed them in such a way that we can get them to spin. Now I'm going to head over to the table behind me so we can actually test out our anemometers in the wind. Set up over here is going to be a, a lovely kind of apparatus that helps me to place my an various anemometers. We can see that we have one from, uh, from earlier, that plastic one that we had spinning around. And I'm going to test both of these out. Oh, it looks like our experiment might not be the best in working. So you know what you can do now that we've seen my attempt at making this work. Let's go ahead and doubly secure this with a little bit of extra tape. Because it looks like our first one didn't quite work out the best. And that is okay. That is really okay. Only the best tape for me. Let's just do it. Let's just do it in the method that I like to do. There we go. Goodbye, tape. All right, friends. Boom. <laughs> I 
I know where we keep our supplies. Nice. I think that looks brilliant. Great. Let's go ahead and place it into my apparatus. It's, it's spinning freely, which is exactly what I want. Uh, remember, you can take this one wherever you want, but I'm going to do a comparison between the two. We need to start our air. Wind comes from air moving. Okay? Air moves from various reasons. One of those is something called convection. If you're thinking of a convection oven, that's perfect because we want you to think of heat. Throughout the day, the sun provides energy. Ugh, it's hot. It can also warm up the ground. When the ground gets warm enough, it will release that energy and make the air above it hot. As that hot air rises, it's less dense. It's like floating on the rest of the air, right? It's floating on the air around it. Air that is uh, that's closer to that region has to move into that empty space. That movement of air going into that empty space allows us to have wind. So I'm going to have air come into this empty space, and we have ourselves wind. Now, if everything is just right and our anemometer is placed in the wind, it should start to spin. Let's see here. You know what? Hang on. There we go, perfect. <laughs> Takes a little bit. My angles are slightly different than I'm used to. So we have ourselves an anemometer that's spinning. Great! But how does that help us predict wind speed? Well, you see, as our anemometer spins, we want to keep track of this cup. You know what? For about 10 seconds, let's go ahead and count the number of revolutions that this thing will actually spin. When it faces you, I want you to count that cup. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and so on. Are you ready? I'm going to count down from three. I'm going to make the wind go a little faster, and we're going to start counting. You ready? Three, two, one, count. Oh, goodness. I lost count. Did you get it? Oh, it was about 10? Perfect. I was guessing it was 10. So we can take 10. Normally, you do this over a minute. But we did it for about 10 seconds. So that's about one a second. So that's about 60 in a minute, which means we can take 60 and do some extra math. Hold on a second. I have a means to do math. We'll take 60 and we'll divide it by 100, and hopefully we get an approximate uh, value. Now this approximate value, based upon the formula I just used, is miles per hour. So it goes about half a mile every single uh, uh, an hour. This air is traveling half a mile in an hour. Very, very slow. Now, let's try our other one that we have and see how it compares. <laughs> it's not spinning anywhere. You know why? My beautiful decoration messed up our build. Let's get rid of some of that. All right. Now, if our measurement for this cup was essentially half a mile for, uh, per hour, what do you think this cup will measure? Think about it. I'm going to move it here just a little bit and adjust my wind because I bet you my beautiful decoration is messing up our anemometer once more. <laughs> My cups are in a different orientation. Let's move this wind. There we go. Perfect. All right. We're going to look for the fire cup. When it points to you, let's do some counting. Here we go. Three, two, one. That was 10 seconds. How many did you count? About about time? Yeah, about 10. You're right. So that must mean the wind is going the same speed. This one was about one a second. That one was about one a second. It must mean the air is going the same speed. It really doesn't have anything to do with our anemometers. It has to do with the way that the air is moving. Now, here's a cool test. I'm going to actually give you the accurate measurement of the wind blowing. This is an anemometer that's been sitting here the whole time. It looks like a tiny little fan, and it's connected to my device here that helps measure the speed of the wind. And if you can see right here, possibly, I'll get a little closer, that five right there is perfect. That's about our measurement. That's about a mile an hour right there, about half a mile an hour. 
So we did the math correctly. Thank goodness. <laughs> so we have two different anemometers that we saw today. The anemometers help us to measure wind speed. Build one at home using a popsicle stick, some cups, and a straw right here down the middle, and you'll have some fun too. Thank you so much for watching us today. My name is Ben Denzel. Have fun, and remember to always do safe science at home. Just for fun, let's make a beautiful, crazy finale to our video. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day.